Welcome to What I Love About Sex, where some incredible guests and I, Steph Kanowski, will be bringing you the tools for improving your sex life with topics such as sex issues with your partner, sexual self-confidence, premature ejaculation, sexual shame, masturbation, sharing your fetishes, orgasmic pleasure, and more. Sex is still so taboo, and I personally believe that by improving our understanding and communication skills around sex, we can enhance our own self-pleasure as well as deepening our long-term romantic relationships. So listen in, try to stay open-minded, and let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on the What I Love About Sex podcast. I want to break down a quote for you guys today because I found it on the John Gottman website, the the Gottman Institute website, and I think it's a great quote and it has some powerful lessons within it that might be lessons for you as a listener or might be reminders for you, and I think either way, they're really good reminders and really good lessons. (laughs) Um, So this is the quote. In order to work on your relationship, there has to be a strong desire to do so and the ability to be open to new ideas and behaviors. This is a quote by Irina Furstein. All right, so how I break this down, I'll break it down in three parts. The first part is there has to be a strong desire to do so. All right, so in order to work on your relationship, there has to be a strong desire to do so. That means relationships take work. And if you go into a relationship believing that, oh, and I feel the butterflies and it's just right and it's just easy, it's not always going to be that way. Even the, even the, the relationships that are the most satisfying and last the longest, they still have conflicts. They don't have any less conflict than the average partner. And studies, John Gottman studies have proven that. Okay, it's, it's really what what differs about these types of partners is the partners who last the longest realize and understand that this is going to take work. Um, we're, we're going to have conflicts and we'll work through them when they come up. It's the understanding, it's the expectation, and it's the, within that expectation is this is going to take work and I'm willing to, to ride this roller coaster of life with you um, and figure it out together. And we'll, we'll have each other to figure things out and to back things off of each other. And that belief of this is going to take work, I think, is so important in a world today where we've been taught that there's this fairy tale of romance where, oh, when you meet the, when you meet the right one, you have butterflies and, like, everything should just be easy. You shouldn't have to work at love. I have to work at my job, not at my partner. Like, I came across um, this post the other day on Instagram and it was like, It was basically talking about what I always talk about, which are monthly check-ins with your partner. And they described a check-in perfectly. (laughs) Like in, I mean, based on my opinion, right? This is subjective. But they give examples of what a relationship check-in or monthly meeting together could sound like and the questions that can be asked to check in with each other and see if there's anything you want to talk about that maybe might have been uncomfortable in the last couple weeks or... Um, anything you're excited about, what you appreciate about each other, what you're grateful for. And it had a list of questions to basically help other people, uh, help guide other people through a check-in so that they can do it with their partners. And the overwhelming majority of responses were, <laughs> were like, I have to work at my job. I don't want to have to work at it in my marriage. <laughs> like something like that. Like so many that related to that idea of like, no thanks, I'll keep my corporate meetings for the workplace, not at home. And people were just so closed minded to this idea. And someone actually called out the closed mindedness by saying, you know, it's funny, I'm sure that the majority of people who are mocking this idea have never tried it. It, because if you try it, you you see success with it. And it really can help your marriage. In fact, it could actually save your marriage. And the people who did try it were speaking up in the comments saying, you know, we've been doing this for 20 years and it's been a game changer. Um, it saved our marriage. It's helped us grow so much. We love our meeting. We enjoy them so much. We look forward to them, you know. And it's like the people who are doing it and who are open to the idea, we're seeing a lot of success in the strengthening 
of their relationship versus the people who didn't want to look at it as, you know, they don't want to see the relationship as having to do with work. Um, They, you know, clearly it was the overwhelming majority and the overwhelming majority of people are not feeling satisfied or happy in the relationship. So there's definitely a correlation there. You know, if we, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to do a check-in and that's the only way to have a successful relationship or marriage, right? It's just the open-mindedness of understanding this is going to take some work. What is a tactic or an action we could take together to make sure that we're working on this basically, right? Like that's what that means. It's a way to take it seriously. And when you don't take your relationship as seriously as other parts of your life, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, look at any part of your life you don't prioritize or take seriously. It doesn't do so well, right? So if you're not working on your marriage and your relationship and you're not intentionally putting actions into it to improve it and to work through the things that are bumps in the road, it's not going to go so well. And that involves your sex life, right? I mean, your relationship, the quality and the connection of your relationship has a lot to do with your sex life. If you're not working on that quality of connection and consistency of connection, your sex life will suffer. You might even be having sex frequently, but it's not going to be great and it's not going to feel good until your connection is prioritized because you're actually working at your relationship. So the next point I want to make is the ability to being open to new ideas and new behaviors. Um, this is this is so paramount because we often get stuck in our ways, right? And then if we fall into a partnership where we're just so comfortable that it's like, okay, well, they're with me now and they've been together. They're not going to leave me now. And we both feel that way. It creates this weird comfort bubble that makes us not want to leave our comfort zone as individuals and or as a couple right so we get into the pattern of doing the same things having the same conversations asking the same questions going on the same date nights having the same reactions to things keeping the same beliefs even though we never talk them through or really think about them um and everything's like the same it's like so familiar and when you're stuck in this familiar place and you feel so safe there Anything that doesn't feel familiar to you, you will have this this inclination to respond to it in a way that is dismissive or shuts it down, blocks it out, is insecure around it, right? Or um, deflects from it. You deflect, you bring up another topic right away, right? You make fun of your partner, make a joke at your partner to, to get them to stop talking about this thing. You shut them down, right? And you you feel threatened by it in a sense because it's like whoa this is not us this is not what we do this is not what we believe and you try to get back to that comfort zone only the comfort zone keeps you in this place where you can't grow and as human beings we're meant to grow over time right as we age we have different experiences we meet different people we learn different things and this makes us change our perspectives on life aka we grow we change a bit so when you are going through this natural growth and you're seeking growth like you're seeking to meet new people you're seeking to go on trips and experience different languages and culture you're seeking to read more books so that you can you can gain insight on different topics when you actually seek it out it allows you to have more of this open mindset which helps you to be open to the changes of within your partner And this makes for strong communication, all right? So when you yourself are seeking to grow and seeking to be open to change, you're more willing to be a better listener with your partner because you're like, hey, I'm growing. I change the way that I think. So if my partner says something that shocks me, instead of shutting them down and laughing at them, making a joke, deflecting, feeling threatened by it, getting defensive, I'm going to sit and listen and be curious, and be like, huh, I wonder why they think this way. And when you have that general, genuine curiosity, you're more likely to ask questions that show your partner, hey, it's okay for you to change. It's okay for you to have a different perspective. Let me hear you out and try to understand you. And when your partner feels heard and feels like you're trying to understand them, they feel safe to talk to you. And when, so see how both of you, when both of you are open to new ideas 
and life experiences and you're willing to grow as individuals, when you come together and when you communicate, you're more open to listening to each other. There's this concept called always already listening. And I learned it when I took a landmark course, which a lot of you, maybe some of you have heard of landmark, maybe a lot of you have heard of it, but it's it's basically a personal development um, like event, I guess, group. Um, what I don't know how to really explain it, but but I, I learned this concept, al- always already listening, and it's this idea that you have built up so many assumptions about something or someone that whenever they say something, you see them in the same way and you, you don't even listen to what they're saying because you think that you know what they're saying. So you kind of shut them out. You just like, you don't really pay attention. You're not really present in the conversation because you're like, yeah, I know what they mean. I know what they're saying. I know who they are. I know them already. And you just have the same reactions. Um, and and this really, this this concept of always already listening is something you have to really watch out for because even those of us who are wanting to be better listeners for our partner, when when we think we know someone so well, we automatically fall into this place where it's like, all right, I don't have to pay attention so, you know, um, I don't have to be so present because I, I know where they're coming from. I know who they are. I know what they believe. And we take on this idea like, oh, I know you already. I know you already. And so we slowly stop listening and we slowly stop being curious. And curiosity is what builds a lot of sexual attraction. So if you're not asking your partner questions and trying to encourage them to be open-minded by having their own individuality and and growing as a person and changing a little bit, like like if you're if you're not encouraging that, you're both going to lose curiosity within your relationship. And if you lose curiosity within your relationship, you lose that growth as individuals and also together. And it's very hard to communicate about the hard things because the hard things take perspective shifting, right? You, When you don't understand where your partner's coming from and you're not really trying because you're not intentionally listening, it's going to make it very hard to come to a conclusion. So if you want to be a good listener... You have to go in with a curious mindset and never, never believe that you fully understand your partner 100% because you don't, all right? And you have to be open to what's going on in their head and you have to really try to understand what they're talking about and why they feel the way they do. Doesn't mean you have to agree with it, but it takes patience and it takes presence and curiosity, genuine curiosity to open your mind enough to hear them out and to really try to understand them. Uh, I see this all the time with clients is like this frustration that, oh, they always say this and like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, do you know what they mean by that? And they'll say, yeah, of course, like she means this. And I'm like, did you ever ask her what she meant by that? And you're like, no, but I know she, I know her. It means this. And I'm like, why don't you ask instead of thinking, you know, and same goes for her. She should also be asking you. You should be asking each other you know, that's a really interesting way to look at it. Why do you think you said it that way? Asking questions like this, okay? Why do you think you said it that way? Um, like, I, I would imagine you would think this, and you're saying this because you believe this. Is that true? Or am I just assuming? You know, don't be afraid to ask questions like that. Don't be afraid to um, just ask your partner, can you clarify exactly what you mean by that? These are great questions when it comes to trying to understand a viewpoint that maybe you don't want to understand, right? And some of us get, some of us do feel threatened when our partner says something that's so beyond what they would normally say or doesn't make sense to us or we we tend to get emotional and we just make assumptions instead of really trying to understand the root of why they're saying this and what they truly believe about this. And often, guys, when you get to the root and you actually understand where your partner's coming from, most, the majority of the time, you will be like, okay, I get it. And you will take less offense to whatever that thing is. Almost always. But people don't ask questions that really get to the root to help them calm down. They just assume that it's this big, horrible thing, and they get angry, and then they hold resentment, and they never really solve the conflict because they don't want to go back to that conversation. It's too painful. It's too hard. Or it's too intense. Whatever word you want to use. And then they just keep putting it off. 
or just burying it under the rug. So I encourage you to ask your partner better questions, especially when it comes to conflict. And even during the day, like ask your partner better questions, like try to try to learn about your partner. If you had one action this week, I would say learn one new thing about your partner. And just hear the voice in your head right now. You might be like, I know everything about my partner. No, you don't. You don't know every single thing about your partner. There's something you never knew about your partner. And it might be something recent. It might be something from their past. It, like, isn't that exciting too to know? Like when I say that, isn't that something that makes you go, oh my God, wait, that's probably true. Like, ooh, I wonder what it is. It brings up a level of excitement. And that excitement is a turn on, all right? That excitement is very equivalent to a turn on in your partner. You get excited when you know you don't know something about your partner you've been with for 50 years, <laughs> 20 years, whatever, 10 years, one year. Um, so I encourage you to start thinking like that because when you're already always listening, you are always already listening, <laughs> um, you tend to just get a little boring in your communication and you stop trying to learn about your partner and you stop trying to grow as a person because you know your partner's like not trying to learn about you you know like we fall into this like bad habit of getting bored and creating a stale relationship when we stop growing as individuals and we stop trying to grow as a couple and be interested in each other um so be interesting and also be interested if you could do those two things in your relationship your sex life will improve do things to be interesting and create curiosity within your partner and be interested, be curious about your partner. This will enhance your sex life, 100%. Um, I was going to go into something else. Oh yeah, I was going to mention, like, think about the questions you ask on a general basis to your partner. Like, maybe it's like, oh, how was your day? Oh, great. And that's like the one thing you ask them every day. But like, Think about how boring that gets if, like, the response is always like, oh, it was good. How about yours? Oh, it was good. Start sharing more. Try to get into a habit of, like, sharing one specific thing that happened. It doesn't have to be crazy good. It doesn't have to be exciting. Like, oh, this guy said this at work. It was, it was kind of weird. Or, like, oh, my God, this thing happened on the way to work driving. It was so funny. Share something. Get out of the habit of just being like, oh, good, good. Okay, you want to have dinner? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Because when you get in that place of asking the same general boring questions, you lose curiosity and you also stop having conversations that actually excite one another. And you have a hard time connecting as a couple because you're hardly talking. Because when you do talk, it's these boring conversations. So you'd rather not have them. You know what I mean? See how this all stems from us losing our curiosity in the beginning of a relationship, we're all hyped. We're like, oh my God, there's so much to learn about this person. There's so much newness here. Oh my God, this is so fun. There's so many experiences we're going to have. There's so many people I want to introduce them to, my family and friends. Like, And then once that's gone, and, and also during this time, think about how much more sex you have, right? How much natural it is uh, to have a lot more sex. It's newness. You're trying stuff out. You're doing stuff. Maybe you're a little freakier. And that's often a thing that's it's very known for people to be a little freakier in the beginning of the relationship because there's so much newness going on. You're so curious. You're so excited by this person. And because you're so excited to learn about them, and you're, it's a turn on, like I said. So you have more sex. And then you're, you know, curious about your sex life and like try to make, explore all those new things. So bring the newness back in. All right. Bring the newness back in. And um, the last point I wanted to make about, and, and by bringing the newness back in, it's just bringing the curiosity back in. Doesn't mean you have to do a bunch of new stuff. It means try to learn more about your partner, whatever that means to you. How can you learn a little bit more? Um, one example I gave was ask more specific questions um, or give more specific answers when your partner asks you a question. Try to get out of that day-to-day -day routine habit that's boring. It doesn't have to be there. Um, also ask yourself, how can I be a little more, more open-minded in about life in general? Is there something I want to try that I haven't been trying? Is there something I want to do? Is there a place I want to go? Um, anything. Even going to a new coffee shop, it might be the smallest thing, 
but you going to a coffee shop that you always thought of going to is you creating some newness in your life. It's actually something to share with your partner. It's something to talk about. When we stop doing things, we stop becoming interesting. And then our partner's no longer interested in us because they think they know everything. All right? So going back to the quote, in order to work on your relationship, there has to be a strong desire to do so and the ability to be open to new ideas and new behaviors. Um, the Speaking on the behavior part, we... I think this is kind of a cool, funny lesson um, where I could share a personal story. And as you guys know, I like sharing personal stories because they probably hit home a little bit more. And um, hopefully they're entertaining. But I, (laughs) Andrew and I have this thing where um, he, he has lots of ways of doing things, like specifically. And this in general, like might annoy people. Um, he even asked me, he was like, does it annoy you that I, I tell you why I do things certain ways and I, you know, tell you why I do them and how it's probably better to do them this way. And I, my response to him, and I'll give you examples. Like he, he says to cut the spinach before we put it in salad. And the reason for that is because more nutrients are released when you chop up the salad versus just throwing the salad in the bowl. And it's really just one, like, five chops. It's not, like, chopping everything up. It's, like, five big chops, put it in the bowl. And that's his reasoning. More nutrients. Um, another example is facing facing the pillowcases inward so that they look better on the bed and you don't see the edges of the pillowcases open on the outside it makes the bed look tidier when it's made which i agree um so so he has all these ways like of doing things like this but he always has a reason to back it up and he asked me is it annoying that i tell you to do things certain ways or like i encourage it to be done a certain way and i was like honestly it would annoy me if you didn't have a reason for it and it was just like oh i like to do it this way this is why we're doing it but because he has a reason and I agree with that reason. It's a new behavior that I can adapt because I understand why he's doing it. And I realize that I like that. I like that reason. It makes sense to me. So if it makes sense to me too, I will agree to change my behavior to now do that thing differently, even though all my life I did it the way I did it. So this is me. This is an example of me being open to new behaviors as a partner And my partner also being empathetic with the fact that it might annoy me, um, but addressing it in a way where he has reasoning um, that end up aligning with mine. All right. So overall, I have been open to hear him out instead of just being like, no, well, that's your way. This is my way. Like your way's weird. Or like, I don't want to do that. Like, no, don't tell me what to do. Right. There's so many ways I could respond to shut him down and not care. And I'm sure if I was just like, oh, I'm going to stick with my way, he'd be fine. Like, it's not like a big deal. It's not like that. But because, because exactly what I told him, because of the reasons, and I enjoy those reasons, I find them endearing. I'm like, you know what? I do like a bed looking really tidy. That brings me joy. Like, that makes me, (laughs) that makes me feel good when something looks really clean and put together. It's like pleasing to my eyes. So yes, I will do that. I do want more nutrients. If that's, If that's true, like, I will cut the spinach, a few chops. You know what I mean? So um, we made up this joke about it, too. And we're like, I'm going to call it Andrew's Life Hacks. And we're like, Life Hacks. And we, like, made some stupid jokes. And now whenever he tells me a hack, we're like, Life Hack. (laughs) And this could have been a conflict, right? But because of the openness, it was not. And this is what this whole point is about. Like, we need to be open And we need to know, like, there's going to be little things like this that can create a conflict, but they don't have to. And even if they did, there's a way to understand each other by being willing to put in the work to understand each other. Because it takes energy to be like, okay, wait, let me hear you out. Hold on. Takes a certain amount of energy. It does. I'm not saying this comes naturally to everybody. Not even me, right? Like, even there was a time when Andrew gave me, like, three life hacks in a week. And I was like, okay, let me... (laughs) give me a minute 
<laughs> there's been like 10 life hacks but then I started giving him life hacks <laughs> like, and now we'll be like life hacks featuring Steph and it's like we we turned it into this thing that now makes us feel bonded we joke about it we respect each other for it um and as long as we agree that as long as we have a good reason for it the other person will attempt to take it on as a new behavior of their own so that's what works for us maybe you're listening and you're like this is bullshit i would never do that that's fine but the whole idea of this is the openness and the realization that hey i might be an adult but that doesn't mean i'm going to stay the same believe the same things have the same habits and do everything the same way my entire life and i hope that my partner in fact the reason why I have a romantic partner, in my opinion, for me, this is me personally speaking, is to make me a person who is growing, who becomes better, who I, a person I enjoy being. And if what he does makes me feel that way, I'm going to take on those behaviors. All right. If I enjoy his reasoning for doing things a little differently, I'm going to do them differently because I enjoy it. It makes me, it makes me excited to do something a little different. And I think if we take that angle like, it's actually exciting to have a partner who helps us change a little bit in ways that we enjoy or find funny or cute. Like, it's okay. And instead of feeling like we have to stay in our own bubble, we should encourage ourselves and our partner to grow and to take on things a little differently and be open to different ideas and not feel threatened. Like, it's good to have a difference in of, of opinion. Like that only strengthens our opinions because it puts them to the test, right? Because we converse about them and we have more realizations. Like there have been conversations with Andrew. I believed something so strongly for most of my life. And then I come into the conversation with that strong opinion. And as I talk to him, he's simply listening. And as I'm talking, I'm realizing, why am I still believing this? Like, wow. Like, and that's because he, he listens. He doesn't argue or make me stop believing that thing he'll ask me questions about it to the point where I'm learning about myself simply by voicing it out loud and having a partner who's listening and not shutting me down or turning me away he's curious his curiosity helps me to even tweak my behaviors or tweak my change completely my beliefs and I think this is what we want in our partner so we can't be afraid to be open to new things and to be able to sit there and hear them out um, when they differ from us that's a great thing you know I mean it's not always a great thing I guess but a lot of times it is a great thing and this all takes work so we have to understand too that in order to work on your relationship there has to be a strong desire you got to go in and believing like this isn't going to be a piece of cake I may have I may feel like life is easy with Andrew because it really is but it also takes work. Like there's another person in my life, in my day to day. I have to be considerate for that person. I have to respect him. I have to hear him out. I have to um, build our romantic connection, right? Like that takes energy. That takes thinking outside the box sometimes. That takes consider. Like it's work. It's work. So it, it's fun work. I enjoy the work, but it, it doesn't mean it's not work. I mean, it still is work. So, <laughs> um, so I think going in believing that is is really healthy so i i personally really enjoyed this quote and i hope you did too and enjoyed my breakdown of it go check out my instagram on uh my recent post on curiosity because that really flows into this whole conversation but um but yeah i hope that you are in at the place where you feel secure and confident enough to hear your partner out when they disagree with you, instead of shutting them down or turning away, listen to them. Hear them out. Give them a chance to speak. It's it's good to test each other in a way that helps each other grow or in a way that helps each other understand ourselves better, right? And testing is not always bad, right? That's I know that kind of has a con negative connotation in relationships, but I think um, there are good ways to test each other where we're just helping each other understand each other <laughs> on a deeper level and um and it's it's a great thing so the the one action from this podcast that i want you to take away is go learn something new about your partner i don't care how long you've been together go learn something new seek it out really have the intention to learn something you never knew about your partner and if you're on instagram tell me what it is 
And actually, in this, uh, if you're listening on Spotify, uh, you should be able to uh, maybe tell me in the question box. But tell me on Instagram, too. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Have an amazing morning, evening, or night, wherever you are in the world. And I'll talk to you soon. I hope this episode helped you. If it did, I would love for you to leave me an iTunes review. It would mean the world to me. You can also screenshot your favorite episodes and tag me on Instagram at Steph Ganowski. And before I go, remember, your sex life is as good as you make it out to be. Until next time.